When we look at the universe today, we know with an extraordinary amount of scientific certainty that it was not simply created as is, but evolved to its present configuration over billions of years of cosmic history. We can use what we see today, both nearby and at great distances, to conclude what the universe was like a long time ago, and to understand how it came to be the way it is now. When we think about our cosmic origins then, it is only human to ask the most fundamental of all possible questions. Where did this all come from? In this video, we are going to take a look at what the scientists are discovering about what, if anything, existed before the Big Bang. According to the generally accepted Big Bang Theory, the universe was formed from an infinitely dense tiny ball of matter. This universal explosion gave birth to the first elementary particles, which then formed stars and galaxies. But new research in theoretical physics has recently opened a possible window into a very early universe. Scientists have a perfect picture of the very early universe, which we know as the Big Bang Theory. In this model, a long time ago, the universe was much smaller, much hotter, and much denser than it is today. In that early period, 13.8 billion years ago, all elements that make us what we are were formed in about the first few minutes of the universe's life. And all this was born from a compact ball of infinite density, the size of a peach, and a temperature of more than a quadrillion degrees. A universe popping into existence out of nothing is so crazy that scientists had a hard time believing it. But the evidence is compelling. The galaxies are flying apart like pieces of cosmic shrapnel, and the heat of the Big Bang is still around us. Generally cooled by cosmic expansion, this afterglow appears not as visible light but principally as microwave radiation. The cosmic background radiation, which was discovered by radio astronomers in 1965. Surprisingly, this fantastic story is confirmed by all modern observations. Astronomers have done everything from observing the residual electromagnetic radiation of the young universe to measuring the prevalence of the lightest elements. And they found that all observations coincide with the predictions of the Big Bang. As far as we can tell, this is an accurate portrait of our early universe, but is it incomplete? Whenever we think about anything, we apply our very human logic to it. If we want to know where the Big Bang came from, we describe it in the best terms we can, and then theorize about what could have caused it and set it up. We look for evidence to help us understand the Big Bang's beginnings. After all, that is where everything comes from, from the process that gave it its start. But this assumes something that may not be true about our universe, that it actually had a beginning. A recent hypothesis suggests that our universe is on one of the iterations of the Big Bounce Theory, which lasts forever. In the Big Bounce Theory, the universe is expanding and contracting, seesawing back and forth in a massively big picture timeline. Some bouncers believe this happened just once, while others believe a cyclical bouncing is what makes our universe. Of course, before physicists decide to abandon the Big Bang Theory in favor of the Big Bounce Theory, these theoretical predictions should stand the examination of observational tests. The main sign that we have yet to investigate is the presence of the initial singularity, or a point of infinite density, at the beginning of the Big Bang. Taken at face value, this tells us that at one point, the universe was crammed into an infinitely tiny, infinitely dense point. This is obviously ridiculous, and what it really tells us is that we need new physics to solve this problem. The theory first developed around 1980 by physicists including Alan Guth, Alexei Starobinsky, Andre Lindt, and Katsuhiko Sato was the cosmic inflation theory. 
According to this epic story, the universe underwent a breathtaking cosmic expansion, doubling in size at least 80 times in a fraction of a second. This rapid inflation, fueled by a mysterious form of energy that permeated empty space itself, left the universe desolate and cold. Only after that did the hot, dense conditions of the Big Bang emerge. As the doubling of the universe ceased, the energy of the vacuum underwent a metamorphosis, transforming into particles of matter and radiation. That metamorphosis flooded space with the superhot plasma of the Big Bang, which forged the primordial elements that went on to make stars and galaxies we see today. Today, this theory is one of the leading ideas for what may have occurred in the moments preceding the deeply ancient fires of the Big Bang. But this particular story has a twist. If cosmic inflation correctly describes what happened before the Big Bang, it may push the ultimate answer to the question of where we came from beyond the reach of science. We don't know anything about what came before inflation, and it is doubtful that we will ever know. One reason for this is because cosmic inflation is a big eraser. Any trace of the initial conditions of how it got started gets diluted because of this exponentially large explosion. Any trace of the circumstances that led to inflation are erased by inflation itself. No matter where it starts, it ends up in the same places. Standard Big Bang Theory does not have any explanation for why the universe is so smooth and so uniform for all these basic properties of the cosmos that we see. Cosmic inflation sets up this initial state. It's a theory that explains the initial conditions for the Big Bang. Inflation tells us that the period of time before the Big Bang was extremely cold, almost at absolute zero, and it was empty of everything but empty space, and that empty space carried energy that stretched the universe out to this enormous size and into the initial state before the Big Bang. In order to explain the properties of the universe we see today, the universe had to double in size at least 80 times. That's a lower bound, so you had to have at least that much doubling. To visualize this doubling, imagine a chessboard. Place one penny on the first square, two on the next, and four on the next. If you continue doubling the number of pennies on each square, you will be a millionaire by the 28th square, and a billionaire by the 38th square. By the time you fill all 64 squares, you will be a trillionaire thousands of times over. Inflation involves at least 80 doublings, stretching a patch of space about the size of a grapefruit to the size of our entire observable universe in less than a trillionth of a second. It is only recently that there has been real observational evidence that supports the model of cosmic inflation. So up until the last 10 or 15 years, it has been a playground for theorists. People are starting to take it more seriously because there is data that supports the theory now. One example is precision measurements of the cosmic microwave background, which built support for inflation and killed off a lot of competing theories. As with the horizon on Earth, the cosmic horizon is an artifact of our viewpoint, not a property of the universe itself. Observers in different locations see different horizons always with themselves at the center. The observable universe, as seen from any point, is infinite. But the universe as a whole continues outward forever. The universe outside the horizon of an observer at any point is invisible because the light from there has not had time to reach them yet. During inflation, space expands so fast that portions of the universe are swept outside the cosmic horizon as objects recede from each other at faster than the speed of light the horizon contains less and less. Inflation and its relationship to the cosmic horizon helped to explain a number of properties of the early universe. The presence of horizons in the universe presents an interesting problem for science, because they represent a limit to our knowledge. We cannot, even in principle, see beyond the edge of the observable universe. The mystery of the first cause remains. You can choose religious faith as an answer, or you can choose to believe science will conquer it all. But you can also, like the Greek septic Pyro, embrace the limits of our reach into the unknowable with humility.
celebrating what we have accomplished and will surely keep on accomplishing without the need to know all and understand all. It's okay to be left wondering. What do you think existed before the Big Bang? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.